Mariners lose eight to nothing. They fall to three and four on the season. They lose two of three against the Guardians in their three game sets. And the homestand ends. I think I said stand, but I may have said stand. Uh, homestand ends three and four. Scoring plays, sure, you got them. Guardians score three in the first. Jose Ramirez double, Josh Naylor RBI ground out, and Will Brennan reaches on an infield single. Three nothing. Second inning, a couple of runs score. Andre Jimenez double to right, and Josh Naylor hits a sacrifice fly to left on a very close play at the plate, but Stephen Kwan does get that foot under the tag. Five nothing. No runs in the third, but in the fourth, three more. Jose Ramirez double to right. Get out of my town, Jose Ramirez. We don't want to see you in these parts. You're really good. Uh, you hit a double to score Stephen Kwan. Like Jose Ramirez is listening. And then Josh Naylor hits a sacrifice fly to right to score Andre Jimenez. And Will Brennan singles home. You guessed it. J-Ram. 8 nothing at the end of four. This is going to be a little quicker one. I have a horrible cough. And as you guys know, I don't edit these things. I just do a one take every single time. And I've been coughing like a, you know what? Sometimes I'll pause if I can tell if the cough is going to be really bad. But this will be fairly quick because, hey, they made it real easy for me. There's no positives to talk about here. There's one positive I want to talk about at the end. But it has nothing to do with this game per se. Starting with the negatives. Uh, George Kirby wasn't good today. He was not three and two-thirds innings of eight runs baseball bad today, but he wasn't good. It's a big disappointment, especially when you consider that he just shoved against the Red Sox in that opener, or his opener. His command wasn't good, and this is a lineup that kind of exposes, I'm not saying George Kirby has massive weaknesses, but exposes what may keep him from reaching his ultimate or reaching that ultimate ceiling of being a ace for a long time. His secondary pitches are just okay. And if he's catching the plate with them, especially against a lineup that doesn't swing and miss, which the Guardians have very little of, there's going to be trouble. There's going to be trouble. I mean, there's no denying, and we'll get into the defense, there's no denying he got zero help today zero but that doesn't mean that George Kirby was good you know yesterday I talked a lot about Luis Castillo and how I thought he pitched a lot better than that line indicated by the way thank you everyone who came to the live there's a positive thank you so much to everyone who came to the live show I'm going to try to do at least once a week uh either on Tuesdays or Wednesday those are my days off from NBC yeah Thank you so much. I had a really good time. I always have fun doing these live shows and appreciate everyone who came out pretty late at night. Anyway, George Kirby wasn't good. George Kirby was not good. Luis Castillo wasn't good yesterday either. But I got comments that suggested that I was just like a Luis Castillo positive for suggesting that there were good things in his start yesterday. That's nonsense. That is a case of, with all due respect, you reading a box score. Congratulations. There's no way you watched Luis Castillo pitch and think that he was terrible yesterday. There's no way you watched George Kirby pitch today and thought that he had easily, easily one of the worst starts from the Seattle Mariners since Chris Flexen. Stat wise. But that doesn't mean either were great. Speaking of not great. I mean, which one do you want to start with? The offense or the defense? I, I wish I had a coin to flip because they were both just terrible all week. And it's funny. Funny is probably not the right word, but it's interesting to see. They looked so awful on defense on Thursday, and they looked so awful on defense today, Wednesday. And in the middle, I guess it was okay, in part because they pitched so well you know, for the most part, that you didn't see the flaws. I just saw the flaws today. And I'm not taking a victory lap here. I'm not saying, you know, haha, I told you so or anything like that. But nothing I saw over this first week, and it's just the first week, nothing I saw suggests that I shouldn't be concerned about this defense. 
it wasn't good in the infield. It wasn't good in the outfield. It's just, it's, it's a roster that is constructed in a way that scares the heck out of me. It could work. It absolutely can work. But boy, it's scary. And speaking of scary, uh, the uh, bats today. Once again, really struggle with runners in scoring position. And they can talk about how that's bad luck and stuff, but they've got to be better. Julio was bad today. Mitch Hanniger was bad today. Mitch Garver was awful today. Sebi Zavala, oh my goodness gracious. Stay healthy, Big Dumper. Stay healthy. Um, I mean, they were bad. Logan Allen pitched okay. He did not pitch six innings of shutout baseball or however deep he got. Not even close. The Mariners are just making things far too easy on these pitchers. And they face some good pitchers. They have faced some quality arms. Logan Allen is a solid back-end starter, I think. But they've made guys look a lot better than they actually are, I think. And this was just awful. The only offensive not disaster is threw some walks. Walked four times today. You're really pushing it. If you think there are other offensive ups, uh, other offensive positives today, the pitching was bad, with the exception of the bullpen. But I have a tough time going gaga over low leverage, great relief pitching. Sorry, sorry, Austin Voth. I'm I'm not going crazy for you in a game recap because you were able to hold a mediocre lineup in check after they scored eight runs in the first four innings. Sorry, just not how that's going to work. But this, this, they didn't pitch well. They certainly didn't field well. And obviously they didn't hit well again. Okay. So the, the, I don't even know how to get into this. Let me tell you why I started my OI. There were a couple of reasons. The first one was, I didn't have a job and I thought maybe just maybe this would be a fun way to make a little bit of spending money, you know, number two, you know, I, there's a lot of really good Mariners sites out there. A lot of very, very good ones. And I discovered after I started the channel that there's a lot of good YouTube channels here too. But one of the reasons why I started this channel was I thought this would be a great place to vent. Not just me, but for you guys. A chance for you guys after you watch crap like this or when you watch great games, and there will be plenty of them. There will be plenty of them. A chance for you guys to wax poetically about how good they looked. A chance to go gaga over Julio Rodriguez hitting three homers. To, to be really excited about Luis Castillo throwing six innings and striking out 12. Logan Gilbert pitching well. Bryce Miller showing more consistency in that first. Lots of great things are possible. But it is a place, I think, that I created in part because I wanted something for fans of the Seattle Mariners to have a chance to kind of just let stuff go. And so the reason I bring this up is, and I, I kind of talked about it last year a little bit. There's only so much you can say about games like this, right? There's only so much that can you can break down the analysis and not just end up with the overwhelming consensus being there's 155 more of these to be played. And so if you want to come in here in my chat your, or whatever you call it, the comment section, and just say, hey, there's 155 games to be played. Why are you yelling? I didn't really yell today, but 
why are you taking this so seriously? How can you blah, 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 small sample size, all that stuff. That's fine. I am still going to hit the heart button and appreciate that you commented. But it's also okay to be in here with some doom and gloom. If you want to have doom and gloom, as long as you're respectful, you're not using a bunch of swear words, you're not making personal attacks or anything like that, by all means. And so when you ask me, what's the point of this? There you go. The point is, I think that this can be a really successful business venture for me as I build up this channel. And not to sound like some sort of amazing sacrificial lamb. I also built this so that you guys can just kind of vent. It's okay to vent. It's okay to be frustrated. And Lord knows that Seattle Mariner fans have the right to be more right to be frustrated from seven games than anybody else. They do. This team's never won a World Series. This team's never been close to the World Series. Kind of close. They were two games away to win. Okay, okay. But they've never been one win away from the World Series. They've made the playoffs once since 2001. It's okay to vent. I'm using this channel to vent as well. It's extremely cathartic. One of the things that I have found in a life that has had its share of ups and downs is that talking about stuff really helps. Getting it off your chest really helps. When you let that stuff build, disaster can happen. Don't let disaster happen. Get it out. Use my channel to just talk about how disappointed you are and how things are going. That's okay. And if you want to be the guy or girl or whatever, if you want to be the person that just also wants to be, come on, guys, there's 155 to go. That's okay, too. Just be respectful. So that's my positive, is that in a game like today, which stunk, stunk, I love that we have this channel to talk about it. I love that we have a building sense of community to talk about our frustrations and to also revel in their success as well. And there will be plenty of success. There will be success. Hard to see it after today. and Really hard to see it after this week. But we know this team's a lot better than they've played. We sure hope so anyway, don't we? So the Mariners have tomorrow off. I might do some minor league stuff. I don't know. I'm not promising anything. Curious what the pitch. Oh, we went over the pitching matchups on Tuesday, but I'll go over them again. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. I knew it was going to happen. Logan Gilbert against Freddie Peralta, Bryce Miller against D.L. Hall, and Emerson Hancock against Colin Ray. Fairly even. Fairly even. Freddie Peralta is a really good one. One of the worst trades the Seattle Mariners ever made. Adam Lynn for Freddie Peralta. And that's that's saying something. Bryce Miller against D.L. Hall. Uh, I would go advantage Mariners. And then Hancock against Ray. We'll see. We'll see. Boy, this was a bad game. But the good news is it's just one. Can't say that forever, but it is just one. I'd really appreciate you hitting like and subscribe. I think I went on a little bit of a tangent and maybe some points that were borderline unnecessary, but hey, hit like anyway. Really appreciate it. It'll be better. I promise you it'll be better. In part, because it can't get worse.